Welcome to War Games. We will get you ready for your next sales opportunity. Are you looking to win the sales battle? You have joined the right team. Here on the War Games Group, we take the strategies and mindsets from the most successful salespeople and share it with you. With our help, you won't have to fail your way to the top. When it comes to crossing the minefield of sales, step in the footprints of those that crossed before you. Prepare yourself for boot camp and beyond. It's time for War Games to begin. Shall we play a game? Happy Wednesday, War Gamers. It's Joe Ingram. But you knew that. I'm always here. So what I want to do is throw up a couple VIPs up here. My lovely bride, Netta, is joining us. Debbie Bettendorf is here with us. And I'm not bringing the guest speaker on yet. I'm just going to let him sit in the green room for a little bit so I can brag on him just a little. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay, I have a very dear friend of mine that in the beginning of my let's go with a self-help journey. Oh, look who snuck in. Brian Galke as well. So in the beginning of my self-help journey, and I know he'll hate that I said self-help, but when you look at it, I sat down and started looking for mentors, people that could help me to become a better Joe, as opposed to just being better at sales or just being better at anything that was out there. And so I got lucky enough to meet an individual. I went to a networking event, one of those typical networking events that, you know, he will tell you is like, ah, what is this? This networking, it's so superficial. But we got there, he started talking, he shared with everybody. He has his own company. He is the, the owner of everythingnextlevel.com. I'm going to put that up there so that everybody can go find out where to go see and talk to him. But when you look at this, I went to this event, I sat down, he started talking and he started sharing with everybody and he started talking about how do you make internal decisions? How do you get better at what you do? And then at that point, I was like, I need to, I need to know this person. I need to make sure that this person is somebody I connect with. And so I walked up and talked to him. He offered a course at the time and he said, I have a live event coming up. I also have these audios that you can buy and get access to. And I was like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do something to connect him into my life. And so I chose to say, OK, let me get the audio because I was going out of town because I'm, I was traveling a lot. As you can tell, I, I travel a lot um, for war games, too. But when you look at this, I said, I need to do this. And he was like, absolutely. You can do this or you can do that. Choice is yours. And so I chose to do that. And then right after that, my schedule changed. And when my schedule changed, I was like, ooh, I could do a live event now. And so when I said I can do a live event with him, I reached back out, said, hey, instead of this, can I do this? And he was like, yes, you can. And since then, I've never let him out of my life. And this has been, I think it was somewhere around 2008. So I've, I've stalked him and made sure he stayed in our lives and everything that goes on. And I'm bringing him in. This is Mr. Bob Donnell. So, but Bob is a very near dear friend of mine. He taught me how to connect with people at a different level than the traditional, hi, what do you do? Hmm. And so Bob taught me that the quality of your life is dependent upon the quality of the questions you ask. And the quality of those answers that come back are based on the questions you ask. Hmm. So then me being me took it the wrong way. And you'll watch him shake his head as I said, great. So now my question to everybody is, so if you were a pirate, what would your pirate name be? Okay. And then he's like, that's not what I meant when I said, ask a different kind of question, Joe. But, but it worked. I had to, I had to. And mm -hmm. so Brian, he did do his hair for us today. You guys match up. So he loves your haircut. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes. Edward McKay says, hello. Ron Siegel only said, hi, Netta. So, Thanks, <laughs> yes, oh, Robert Rogers in the building. And then there's a guy, the relationship coach, I think, Wesley Gu. Oh, Wesley Gu, thank you, sir. <laughs> That's my little Jeff. Look at Netta. Ha! Huh? No. 
<laughs> so, but okay, fantastic. So this is what I want. Everybody on the screen, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to flip it around a little bit and let's see, let's move the layout over here and then say, Bob, come over here, switch with me. There you go. Damn. See, look, Edward McKay. Uh-huh. Love the nice. pirate name. It gets people thinking, brother. I'm telling you. People start thinking when you ask them what their pirate name is. So um, he hasn't spoke yet, Ron. That's why <laughs> I'm I'm dominating. Joe Soto, welcome. So if you guys understand that, look, in this business, you, you're going to be dealing with people. A master connector of people and a person who knows how to build relationships is Bob Donnell. Bob Donnell is the one who shared with me, okay, that Dr. Rome said, Robert Rome said, hey, guess what? You are the, the average of the five people around you. And then Bob came back and said, you know what? I think we should make an intentional peer group, right? Or as somebody else had said before, a, a group of overachievers, a support group. Yeah. Okay. And so Bob went out, took action, and did it. And Bob still does it today. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll let people know how they can actually reach out to you and go, Bob, how can I join the support group for other overachievers? Because we're all here and we're all in here because we believe in making ourselves better. And that's a true sign of an overachiever. Mm -hmm. So look at hey, Netta, Wesley Goo's commenting to you. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down, Netta, with the relationship coach laughing. Yes. So... And then there you go. I remember hearing that the connecting live session was one of your favorites. Okay. Bob conducts these, these uh, events, these live events at the time. So I got the first one, which was mastering your inner game. Then after mastering your inner game, which is revolutionary, he came up and said, I'm going to teach people how to connect with people. And this is, I'm going to call it connectology, which always gets a red underline, right? Every time I type it anywhere. OK, but Connectology, he put together and then it was like, OK, wow. And I went to this group and I went to it multiple times because of the fact that the information is so good. And one of the things I also learned from Bob is that you can only understand information at the level at which you've achieved so far. Your level of understanding changes as you grow. So going back and taking the same class you took before and then realize, how did Bob get so much better at this stuff? Mm -hmm. And he's like, um, I said it the last time. It just went poof, right over your head. So what I want you guys to understand, I want to turn it over to Bob, because Bob understands what entrepreneurs go through. Bob understands exactly what people need in order to relate to people better. And we can all say that, you know, now, you know, my answer is business is about results. Results get you relationships. OK, so I'll beat you on results. Bob can show you how relationships expand and make you even more money. But, Bob, if there was a couple things that you can impart wisdom today to this group of entrepreneurs all over the Internet that is going to say this will help you today to become better either as a person or in business. So, yeah, that's, um, you know, the idea of getting better results, the idea of making better uh, connections is, is going to be fundamental and, and based on what do you believe the results would do for you? What do you believe? Let me ask you, what do you believe one great connection? And I'm talking great connection would do for you. Because if you don't have a clarity on that, the challenge is you're going to go out and make results. You're going to go out and make relationships or start relationships without any clear idea of what the benefit is going to be. And here's the fact. It's not just the benefit to you. It's the benefit to others. You know, there's a, there's a great thing that, that I've been saying for years, and it says that, um, that when you and I operate from the less than our absolute best, and I mean our absolute best, when we operate less from less than that, the world is operating from a deficit. And so when we realize the responsibility of us to constantly be raising the bar for ourselves so that we're performing at an even higher level – because it benefits the rest of the world, then that's when we when we start from that position, um, we've got legs to run on. As long as we believe we're doing it for ourselves, we're always going to be limited in the impact that we can create from that. So, the you know, the connectology is that idea of first things first, 
And that is that the quality of your connection with anyone, live, online, uh, and social media, the quality of that connection is going to be determined by the quality of uh, questions that you ask. If you walk up and keep asking the same question, what do you do? Um, you're going to get very, very similar answer all the time. The challenge with that is typically that answer doesn't give you what you're really looking for. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, but make sure that you're asking the right questions. Um, and, and that's going to be the beginning point of any relationship. Any currency is going to come from that. I'm going to throw up to you, Dora. I wanted to say hello, but in Teodora. Romania, she evidently she doesn't know what time zone she's in to see that, but it's afternoon over here, Theodore. And Ron Siegel wanted to point out that his wife always tells him to shut up. And now that I've been gushing about you for the first eight minutes, I should shut up. But I already did that. And Ron, I'll use the same excuse you tell Mindy. It's my show. So <laughs> here we go. So that's where I would begin is one, what questions are you asking? Um, for example, when you go to a networking event, <clears throat> remember this tagline, networking is for amateurs. Connecting is for professionals. There's a big difference. Uh, networking is kind of like setting the TV near the wall and lay, and pulling the plug out and setting it down on the ground. That's like networking. Connecting is plugging the plug in. That's where you're going to get the power. That's where you're going to get the juice. And that's where you're going to get the results from the, from the TV. You're never going to catch a channel because the TV cord is sitting on the ground. You're going to catch a channel because you've plugged it in. So networking is for amateurs. Connecting is for the professionals. If you want to be a professional, you have to learn how to not only connect, but you have to master the art of connecting. And so in Connectology, there's there's three principles that you have to do, or there's three things that you have to do. One is you have to realize that it's contacting, which might be a phone call. It might be an email. It might be, uh, you know, saying hello to somebody on the street. That's a contact. That's not a connection. The second part is the connection. What have you done to develop that relationship? Um, and that's going to be in the connection process. And then the third and final step, most 90% of the people forget, and that's called cultivate. Contact, connect, and cultivate. When you set that in, in motion, you've literally set up a relationship that has legs on it. Uh, you, have a, you have a relationship that can actually perform and get you the results you want. So let's talk about that contact first, um, but then let's talk about the connection and then third, let's really wrap that up with the idea of what am I doing to cultivate this relationship so that it gives me the results that I really want. Is that? That's fantastic. And feel free to pick on Brian or Debbie. All right. All right. Ned, Netta won't answer you. She's going to say no. <laughs> She's going to say, come on, I got this. Let's go. But no, you can pick on Netta too. But okay. Don't pick on me. So guys, let me ask you this. Are you really clear on what a great connection will do for you? What will it do for you personally? What will it do for your profession? What will it do for your business? What will it do for your relationships? Look, I've got people in my life that are there for a period of, for a long period of time, because not only do we make a contact, we made a connection, but we've also cultivated that relationship. And so when you have those kind of relationships, um, they benefit you in a lot of different ways, but also hopefully you're benefiting them. But one of the things I can say is that everything I've achieved in my life has been as a result of my connections, has been in, as a result of me cultivating relationships over the time. So let me talk about relationships really quick because I think it's mis, mis, um, misunderstood. Um, there is a sequence to relationships. Write this down. Sequence matters. There's a, there's a sequence to relationships. If I walked up to uh, Debbie and said, hey, Debbie, uh, would you like to have sex? I'm probably going to get smacked and her husband's probably going to beat the hell out of me. So the bottom line is that sequence does not match. If I gave you seven random numbers and said, here, call me on the very first time, I'll give you $10 million. The odds of you dialing the right numbers are not very good in sequence. But if I gave you the numbers, 949-542-6398, you'd be able to call me the very first time. That's how important sequence is. Unfortunately, when we're saying, we, when we're trying to connect with somebody and we say something and their answer is no, how many of you guys hear a no every now and then? All of us. Here's the reason. It's been, it's been put in, in the wrong sequence. People will always say no when there's uncertainty. People will always say no when they're not sure of what's really you're really asking 
or they're not sure that they can trust in you asking for that, that it's okay. Now, look, if you walked up to a stranger on the street and said, can I have a dime? They'd be like, here. But if you walked them in the corner and said, hey, can I have five bucks? A little bit, a little bit more relationship currency is going to be required. Hey, can I walk? Can I ask you for a hundred bucks? The odds are almost no, right? And here's why. You don't have the relationship for asking that. And unfortunately, what we find is there's a lot of people asking um, a question that they don't have the relationship currency for. And so therefore, the answer always becomes an automatic no. So the first thing I would say about it, make sure that the question you're asking for them is the right level of, you have the right level of relationship currency for. So this goes to criteria for me. I believe that you have to have a criteria for everything in your life. And for me, criteria is non-negotiable. So I happen to have six criteria for everything in my life. My, my personal um, friendships, uh, in, inner circle friendships, my clients, and also my strategic partners. So I have six that go for all of those. Now, if you have five, but you don't have the six, it's a no-go. Because that I mean what I mean when I say non-negotiable. If, if it's, well, there's five, but you know, five is good enough, then the sixth one wasn't non-negotiable. It wasn't negotiable. So when I talk about criteria, I'm talking about characteristics and behaviors for people. There's characteristics and behaviors that are going to be found in every one of my clients, every one of my inner circle, and every one of my strategic partners, or they wouldn't be there. Now, can those change? Yes. But the bottom line is, the more important thing is, have I set out with a criteria so that when I'm asking the questions, people always say, Bob, if I can't ask, what do you do? What question can I ask? And I always default to, what's your criteria? Because your criteria determines the question. And then asking the question has a lot of variables to that. One, is it the method, the message, and the messenger that's asking it that's getting a yes or a no? Or is it the right circumstance? Are you asking a question, the right question, but the wrong time? And, and when, I, when I teach on that, it's always amazing to watch people's minds go, whoa, I didn't realize that. Um, so when I think about asking questions based on criteria, I say, well, one, you have to have a criteria. So I can't give you all six of mine because what happens when I do that is people just automatically adapt the six for theirs, for their own. And it's not that easy. And it's not that, not, not that beneficial that way. So one of mine, I'll just explain, is open-minded. So my non-negotiable is open-minded. A strategic partner in my life needs to be open-minded. A close personal friend of mine needs to be open-minded. A, uh, a, a, a client of mine needs to be open-minded. Now you say, why, Bob? Why is that so necessary? Here's the reason. Because if they're not open-minded, um, and I don't do things the way that they see things should be done or all the time, then we're going to have a battle and it's not going to be beneficial to either one of us. So immediately open-minded is a primary um, principle that I need to have as a criteria. So how do you find out if somebody's uh, open-minded? You know, one of the things I might say <laughs> I, I know number six is sexy and that's why I'm in yeah. and Ron Siegel is not. <laughs> I get yes. it. And then I, I also it. I also got a big old brick of a question from Wesley Goo. Okay. So let's let's continue with where you're at because he okay. jumped back a step. But so, sorry. so the question, are they open-minded? I can ask a lot of different questions if I want to find out if they're open-minded. But if I don't know that I'm looking for open-minded, the odds of me asking a question that's going to give me that is almost none. So it's important to know what the criteria is. Then you can ask a multitude of different different questions. I believe that it's always good to have at least one, two, three questions that will help flush out whether they're open-minded or not. Here's why. You don't go hunting bear with only one arrow. You just don't do it. You'll die. So the thing is, is to make sure that you're asking the questions that will flush out um, whether they're open-minded, in my case, for in open-minded. So, Bob, what's a question you might ask if someone is open-minded or not? Well, the first thing I'm one of the questions I have, I have probably six in that in that particular quiver. Um, in one of those is is um, when was the last time you did something for the very first time? Now, why is that important? Because they're going to answer one of two ways. One, oh, easy. I went to a soccer game um, last week 
for the first time in, in my life. Or they're going to say, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I need to think about that because I'm kind of a creature of habit. I like to do the same things over and over again. That's probably be a good indicator that they're not very open-minded. Not a slam dunk, but it's definitely worth investigating a little bit further before you expand into this relationship with them. When you re Then you realize that they're not open-minded. So asking that question. Here's the thing. Somebody says, you know, Bob, I went to a soccer game last week for the very first time. Watch what happens. Remember the first question that no, most people ask, what do you do or what do you do for a living? What do you do? But watch this. Somebody says, I went to a soccer game for the very first time. Really? And what did you like best about it? Oh, man, I love the energy of it. The fan base was crazy. Well, why did it take you this long to go? How did you get there? Uh, one of my friends has been bugging me for 10 years and he's just been bugging me and bugging me. And, and I finally said, okay, now watch what I just learned. One, I learned that he's open to being influenced. It might take some time, but he's open to being influenced. Two, he has relationships for a long period of time, 10 years. Um, three, that what he really likes is the energy and the excitement, so the enthusiasm. So if I'm going to approach him or talk to him about business opportunities or even friendship, if I'm just wanting to have a deeper uh, relationship, um, I've got a lot of different ways that I can approach him that will give him the benefit of excitement, enthusiasm, all of that, the energy of a crowd. But I can also now approach him from a place that he wants to be approached from, relationship. Um, having friendship for a long uh, period of time, it means something to him. So now we've got a basis for for investigating at least what that next um, characteristic or, or criteria might be. So um, I, I think that that's a great starting point for anyone is to stop and go, hmm, I need to really think clearly about what the benefit of a great relationship will be to me. And then what is my criteria for developing a relationship with someone? And then, then we start asking the questions that will help us do that. Any thoughts? I, I see posts going up there. So, um, oh, yeah. So it, one of the things that what I like what Bob brought up to everybody is that he said there's contacting, then connecting, and then cultivating. OK, and so when you look at that and you say, OK, I contacted somebody where all of us believe that's a connection. Right. And what he's doing is saying, I contacted you, but I filtered you through something to see yes. if we're going to actually have a connection. Don't right. invest in connecting with people that don't meet the criteria. And too often we don't have a criteria. We just go into it and hope to run into our friends Right. And then in my world, I go, it's like, listen, believe and buy is how we get to that, that, that whole point of doing that. And so Brian Galkey threw out there, he likes asking, where do you go on vacation instead of where do, what do you do? All right. My question to Brian would be, Brian, what is it that you're looking to find out? What is it that you're looking to flush out? Do you have a criteria that if they answer that, is there a yes or no? Uh, does that help you define yes or no? Or do you have to keep going and keep going to find out the, the answer to your question? I first do it at networking events just so I'm not like everybody else because everybody hates the question, what do you do? Because everybody yeah. thinks, oh, I'm just waiting to see what's in it for me. But that tells me, right. are they adventurous? Are they planners? You know, Do they plan everything out to a T or do they just show up and then wing it once they're there? So then I know how to interact with them later on. So, for example, I talked to somebody about this at a trade show the other week. And they said, you know what? I'm going back to Europe. I'm going to buy a one-way ticket to Italy and I'm going to come back out of France. So I know they just kind of wing it versus if somebody told me, hey, I'm going out there. We've got a river cruise where we're planning every day and we're going to get off in all these stops. That's somebody who needs more structure when I'm working with them. Okay. So that's great. And I, and I definitely appreciate that. What if, though, your question um, identified whether they were a yes or a no for you? Uh it's kind of hard with what I do, but I, I see your point. You see what I'm saying? I mean, like for me, open-minded, for example, just the one, open-minded. I can ask a million different questions that lead them to answer whether they're open-minded or not. If they're not open-minded and I can show that they're not open-minded, I don't need to flush out the other five. It's just a no. So I don't need to spend more time with them. So my question is based around what my non-negotiable criteria is. That's made the world of difference for me 
um, whether I've been in a networking event or not. And I, I, I agree with you hundred percent, Brian networking events, they get asked the same questions over and over again. Here's one of the things I do when people say, Bob, what do you do? I normally catch them before they do that and try and help them. But more often than not, if they, if they ask that, I'm going to answer with, you know, one of the things I do is teach people to not ask, what do you do as an opening line of question? He's and not lying. I've been it, standing next to him when he does this. Yes. And it gets a lot of different responses. Some don't like it, but guess what? If they go, he's just too flippant about that. I don't really appreciate that. Are they open-minded? Nope. nope. So do I need to spend more time with it? No. So when they get offended at that one, I'm like, I'm done. Next. Um, but if they go, and I had one, I had one gentleman um, at an event that said, uh, Bob, what do you do? And before I could answer it, our friend Glenn Morshire was standing there and he goes, oh. <laughs> he knew what this is going to happen. Don't ask, don't ask. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I said what I said. And the guy, here's what happened. He said, I need to spend more time with you. Is that guy open-minded? Yes. Guess yeah. what? He and I are really, really good friends. Um, nine years later, eight years later, we're still really tight friends because he matched the criteria. Now, he also matched the other five over the course of time. But right then I knew he's open-minded. He's like, hey, uh, maybe I can spend, maybe I can learn something. Absolutely. So Ron Siegel wanted to throw out some props. Bob wow. helped me overcome my fear of spe public speaking. And then he shared it with an LAPD officer who failed the exam three times and then passed immediately because he shared wow. what you did. So Thanks, Ron. I appreciate that. Um, I, I did not know that. So thank you for sharing that. And then we'll go to Wesley Goo because he has a question I'm sure all of us have come up with, right? Okay. Is How does one person know when they have relationship currency? He gets requests from people all the time. So for example... Great you would question. say, Wes, can you do this? Because somehow I feel I know Wesley because we've been on social media and I've clicked like on every one of his posts and never once made a smart ass comment on them. Right. So, of course, he'd have to like me. So um, but they don't have re the, the thing. So they're assuming they have it. OK, so he took one of my things, which was assume rapport. <laughs> and somebody's assuming the rapport that they don't have. Right. Right. And so he's like, but he hasn't heard from a person in a long time. And how do you know if you have relationship currency with that person? Do I ask him for a dime first and then go to five bucks and then try a hundred? Is that is that start with a thousand? Go with that. <laughs> Just live well, on the you know, I think that, that's a great question. And I think one of the things is is we typically know whether we have if you if you believe that you can walk up and ask for a thousand bucks from somebody you pretty much know that you've got to have some kind of credibility with them or, or some kind of relationship currency. But here's the bottom line is, um, you know, Wes and I've talked about this a lot when somebody says, well, it doesn't hurt to ask. Oh no, it, it definitely hurts to ask. Um, it, you can ruin your credibility with the wrong ask at the wrong time. So it does. So um, I wouldn't suggest just going around and asking, but what I would say is, you know, do I believe that this person one has the ability to answer this um, in a positive way. And two, do I believe that I've earned any right to that? And if you ask those questions and then you say, yeah, I believe I have, what have I done to earn that right for them to say yes? Again, this is something that when I teach this, people go, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just do that. I'll just do that with my, my criteria and I'll just do that. Bottom line is it takes a lot longer to do the, your criteria. Your criteria is something that should take you a week to do being revised over and over again, but at least a few hours to be revised. Um, absolutely. It can, in fact, and hurt, it does. He just types really slow. So you had, you had already said, yes, in fact, it does hurt. So he did yeah, that. Yeah, uh, Wesley, Wesley and I agree on that 100%. So Robert Brooker learned his lesson the first time he did it and asked, <laughs> out of turn. So that, that goes back to what you said too, which was sequence matters. Yeah. So those people are jumping out of sequence yep. that come through and I'm recapping for all y'all who should have wrote it all down already. Okay. <laughs> and then he also mentioned that it, is it the method, the messaging or the messenger? Yep. And that's what you look at. And that goes with everything sales, Right. And it looks at it and says, are you asking them? But if you're asking them out of sequence from what's going on, 
right? Bob, Bob used to tell all the time, a confused mind never never buys. Right. I heard that from him. And then I, I adapted it to online shopping. And I heard it from somebody else. So Yeah. And I, I said to him, I said, oh, look, you know what? Uh, a confused mind will never click submit on your website. True. So you have to make sure that they have a reason to click it. And that's what you look at. And so, and that was funny. Ron said he's been slapped many times with the wrong ask at the wrong time. And a lot of them is from Bob and I. So, <laughs> so we can go with that one. But, we all have, you know, we've all been slapped. Um, you know, I, I talk about connecting and I talk about, and, and yet, you know, I make bonehead mistakes just like everybody else. I was at the Academy of Country Music Awards and people had been saying, you need to meet Dr. Phil. You need to meet Dr. Phil for years. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because you do intervention style. You help people with really getting fixed, getting things done because you're intervention style. And much like Dr. Phil, I'm like, okay. One day I'm at the Academy of Country Music Awards standing backstage and I'm standing with another artist. And all of a sudden Dr. Phil comes walking by. I had no idea he was going to be there. But I'd always told people if I run into him, I will definitely meet him and connect. Man, be careful what you say. Because I remember standing there going, I, okay, well, I promise, so I'm going to do it. I walked up to him and I said, uh, Dr. Phil, can I have a second? He goes, sure. And I'm going to do a poor Dr. Phil Im imitation. But I said, <laughs> um, I said, uh, you know, people always say that I should should meet you and connect with you. So this is, this is why I'm stopping you. And he goes, well, why is that, Bob? And I said, uh, because I'm, I'm a younger version of you. Ooh. And right away, I don't know what I saw, but I knew that I was not saying the right thing because whatever it was in his eyes that made me feel so uncomfortable, I went, ah. and I was trying to grab the words back to no avail. <laughs> and he just looked at me and goes, it's all right, Bob, just own it. <laughs> in a voice that only Dr. Phil could do. And I did, I had to stop and go, I own it. And, um, you know, Look, it doesn't matter how great we are at something. We can all flub up. But here's the thing is, then I said, you know, Dr. Phil, I misspoke. I would really like to connect with you differently. And I've had two conversations with him since then. So even when you do something, you can recover. But it has to be with authenticity, sincerity. It has to be with the right motives uh, and the right intentions behind it. Perfect. Okay. So... We go for 30 minutes, Bob. If you can stay, you know I'm going to bug you with questions. Myself, okay? And, of course, Debbie, Netta, and Brian, if you've got questions, go for it. That's here. But I, I want you guys, because I think when you look at this and you say, yeah, it's really easy to do that. Okay. And so Brian does have to take off in a second. We get that. He doesn't want to be rude. And he doesn't want to say I'm a younger version of Bob. But it's going up, Brian. <laughs> but so – Again, so some of the things that I think a lot of us do, somebody says, this is what I do and this is how I do it. And then you in turn watch that person to see if they can do what they just said they did. Right. Okay. Yeah. And they look at that and go, are they congruent with what it is they're sharing with you? Yeah. So um, one of, you know, I have a favorite story from Bob, um, but I, I'm going to go for the second favorite story. OK, the second favorite story that I look at is the one with Tim McGraw. Tim's a great one. Yeah. OK. And so the lunch thing and yeah. the, the whole thing. Can you walk people through this thing? And if you could be that little that little bubble that popped up on those little videos on MTV that comes up and goes, what Bob did when he did this, he said, da, 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 da. this helped him okay. to gain this. Yeah. Kind OK. Of. So what was the first one that you had? My first one is Garth Brooks. Oh, that's all right. Okay. And it's not just about the fact that I love country music. That's not oh, what it is. Yeah. So, but when I look at it, go, those are two stories that I look at and go, wow, yeah. this shows your ability to connect with somebody differently than I'm a fan. Oh, right. I'm a fan. It's like, come on. How is that person going to even know to think about it? Right. If in their criteria, right. Right. You don't move from contacting to connecting. Right. Right. And so, but the, the Tim McGraw one and out here. Break it, down, break it down a little bit. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, Tim McGraw, I had met Tim and Faith at Academy of Country Music Awards um, several years before the one I'm going to share with you. And um, Justin, who gives out rings 
for um, for high school rings and things like that. They also make rings for a lot of celebrities and celebrity events. They had made out these rings. And so I'm standing back where a lot of the artists are. Um, but there's a barricade between the Jostens rep and um, and the celebrities. And he turns to me and he says, the Jostin rep says, hey, man, is there any way I could get these rings to Tim and Faith? And I said, let me see what I can do. And I walked over to Tim and I say, hey, Tim, um, the Jostin rep has something he wants to give to you guys. Do you, could you come over? And Tim says, oh, absolutely. Walks over, uh, Faith, he and Faith. And the Jostin rep gives that to him. Now, um, that's it. Tim goes back. I never introduced myself to Tim. I didn't give him my name, credentials, anything else. I just asked him. He said yes, and, and how long he went. The Jostin rep was so excited that about a week and a half later, I got the same ring that Tim McGraw got with my name engraved on the inside um, as a gift for helping him make his connection with, with Tim and Faith. That was really cool. It was such a cool, it was unexpected. No, nobody told me that was going to happen. Uh, I could have never expected it. But fast forward a couple of years, I'm at the Academy of, no, I'm at the Grammys in uh, in LA at Staples Center. And it's a day of rehearsal and um, Tim McGraw and is standing back in Staples Center, standing back where the audience sits. And I'm standing maybe, I don't know, eight to 10 feet away from him. And um, never, you know, never said, hey, remember this? I just said, hey, you know. Um, Faith Hill takes the stage and she's doing a rehearsal. And so she's singing and Tim turns to me and goes, do you have a, a flashlight? And I go, I, I don't. And I said, but I'll find you one. I'll get you one. So I go and I find a flashlight, bring it back to him and hold it. And he does this while his wife is singing. And we're like, that's so cool. <laughs> and Faith sees it and starts to laugh. And uh, afterwards she comes down off the stage and um, maybe a two minute conversation. Hey, it was great. Great seeing you guys. You know, thanks. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And off they went. That's it. So really still no exchange of name, no exchange of number, no exchange of anything. The third time um, I'm at the uh, uh, restaurant late, um, across the street from the Anaheim pond, which is where the ducks play now. It's at, at Honda center. So I'm across the street there and, and, uh, and I see up on the stage, uh, up on the billboard, Tim McGraw here tonight. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even know he was going to be here. I mean, it wasn't 15 minutes later. I'm waiting for my, my, um, my clients and prospects to show up. And I see Tim walking across the street with one of his band members and walking up towards me, towards the door. And I said, now listen to this. I said, Tim, can I tell you a story about you and Faith and myself? What is he, is he ever going to say no to that? Mm -hmm. I just included he and his wife. He's like, what? I said, he goes, no, what, what's up? I said, you know, Academy Country Music Awards. Um, but more importantly, when you were, uh, when Faith was performing at the Grammys, the day of rehearsal, you asked for, for a, a lighter. I gave it to you. And I, I tell you, when you did that, that just warmed my heart. It made me just love you even more because of the man that you were being in that moment. You didn't care about anybody, you know, going, oh, why is he doing that? Oh, you know, he's just kissing up. You just, I loved that about you. And he goes, wow, thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. And I said, hey, you know, when you go in, um, have a great lunch, just enjoy it. And he goes, have you been here before? I said, yeah, you know, a friend of mine owns it. It's a great place. He goes, okay, great. He goes in, I'm standing there. We, my clients and I walk inside, we sit down at a table and I take out a business card and one of my business cards. And I said, Tim, you've been a blessing to so many. My turn to bless you. Lunch is on me. I folded it up and I handed it to the waitress. I said, could you take it over to that guy sitting there on the baseball cap? He's wearing a baseball cap. Nobody would have recognized me unless they're, you know, fans. And uh, she walks over, hands it to him. Tim looks at it and then goes, that's it. He just acknowledged it. That's it. No big deal. I wasn't expecting him to even acknowledge it. I just did it because that's what I do. I mean, I know that's what Joe and, and Netta do too. They buy people's meals. They buy people drinks. They're, they'll surprise you with showing up at the house with, with stuff that they've, you know, they've bought from, ordered from Amazon. And it's just who they are. And that's all it was. I, that's just who I am. So I'm sitting there talking to my clients, never mentioned what happened, anything. Um, at the end of their lunch, Tim and his part, his business uh, person comes over walks right up to me at the table and says, 
Hey, Bob, man, it was great seeing you again. Want to introduce me to your friends? What do you think my relevancy was at that table? I was king of the hill. Why? Not because of something I did, but because of who Tim is. Right? I was who I am. He prov he provided who he is. Guys, that that was amazing opportunity to understand connection, connect or um, contact. Maybe that first time. The second time was probably more contact. The third time was more of a connection because I said, hey, can I tell you a story about you and Faith and I? That develops a little bit level of relationship currency. Now, I bought the meal not to get him to do something. I bought the meal with the intention of letting him know I appreciated him. And then what he does with that is completely up to him. And I think a lot of times we mistake what we do for people um, as a way to get them to do something. And I'll tell you, that's nothing more than a form of manipulation. Um, tension has to be different. So one of the things Robert Brooker put out there too was it's the gift uh, in the work of a person living fully within each moment. Mm -hmm. Right. And I will say that that is Bob, wherever Bob is at, Bob is at. Mm -hmm. And so you don't sit across a table from Bob and he's lost in thought somewhere. Mm -hmm. Right. And which is really difficult when Wesley rambles on, but but he is he is full on there and present in what you do. And I think that that builds a lot of credibility with the person across from you because Maybe. you're sitting there and it's like, oh, I'm here and I have this undivided attention yeah. that that went through. So I, but I, me, that. That's I, I received cool. that because that's probably one of the most important things somebody can say to me is that they they felt they were seen, heard and that I was present. So thank you. Somebody's still here. <laughs> is Wesley laughing? I can't tell what that yeah, is. Yeah, he's laughing and crying a little bit. It and was, crying, yeah. Yeah, it was such a great connection. That's actually Flo. So, oh, hey, Flo. She's just a Facebook user today. <laughs> but um, so here's what I want to I want to put out to everybody and understand here, Bob. If there was one program that you had that would change the lives of most people here, and again, we like good sales pitches here, so I'll do it. But when you look at it and say, say, what, what is it? How can, how can people get in touch with you? How can people get to the first point of contact? Yeah. Okay. Cause I learned how to connect people from you mm. that went through. So like Debbie started her show. I was a guest on her show that Great was on there. And then I Great. said, you need to talk to Bob. And now mm. Debbie's over there going, I know why. <laughs> yes. And so, um, cause you can find it. So that's it there. But when I look at that and say, Bob, what, how do people get in touch with you? How do they look and say, I need to work with Bob. I need to find out what Bob, how do I get around Bob and his association, right? Into his circle. Yeah. I think there's a couple of different ways. One, I, everything next level.com, which is on the screen is, is my website. I think probably the most important way is if you want to do that nine, four, nine, you can text um, war games, all one word, text war games to nine, four, nine, two, two, nine, 8016-229-8016. And, and then we can, you know, kind of look at some different options. Um, you know, I think always the, the best thing we can do is, is to start taking in information, but even far more important than that is taking in the information and applying impl implementation of that information is this key point. You know, there's total immersion and spaced repetition. If I have to pick one or the other, spaced repetition will always trump total immersion. Total immersion will be great for the moment, but beyond that, so I, you know, I always offer a group coaching call every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. And people can hop on and ask me any question they want. And it's, it's right now it's 50 bucks a month with a 12 month commitment, but 50 bucks a month. And you can hop on and ask any question, personal, professional, um, about Connectology. If you want to every week, ask me a Connectology question. You've got an event coming up and you want to, that's a great way to do that. And it's, you know, like I said, it's 50 bucks a month. So, um, but 50 bucks a month right now isn't even even dinner. It's like a fast food lunch at this point. Or a tank of gas. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no, not even any tank I have. So um, then Wesley threw out some love. Mm. So, so whenever uh, Joe lets him come out to play. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> but but so again, guys, I'll, look look on the screen, right? Text War Games to to Bob's number, the nine four nine two two nine eight zero one six. Okay, then you can find out from that point. I will tell you right now: be open minded, because he already gave you number one. 
That's right right. There. So if you come in and go, is this one of those things? Then whatever, he'll be like, yeah, okay, let's move on. Right? He'll probably text you something nice, but um, I might just let it, I would say here, right? Okay, so here's Tyler asked the question: Is that a training plus a Q and A, or is it just a Q and A call only for your Wednesdays? Yeah, the call, the call, um, the Q and A is. I mean, the call is a Q and A. You can ask any question you want personal and professional, and I'll answer it. Very laser focused, very solution oriented. Uh, it's not going to be about story. It's going to be about what you want to achieve and then and do that. So that's a 12 month. Anybody who signs up for that, for the 50 bucks a month, I'm going to give them a, um, a video for Connectology, which is, a, I think, about a four hour video. And uh, it might even see Joe in some of that video. So um, dancing, you'll, you'll get the video, which is normally sold for 197. Um, I'll, I'll I'll offer that here for 97, but you're more than welcome. If you sign up for the, the group coaching after we've had a discussion, I'll give you the, I'll give you the video. Yes. And as Bill typed it faster than I can say it, right? Hey, Bill. That's a deal. That's a deal. So, so again, it, it's group coaching. I, I've been on many of the calls. And so if I've got something, I go, mm, what is this that keeps kicking my butt? I jump on the call. And then I will I will message over and say, here's my question. Or Bob will go, okay, hey, five, six, two, what's your uh, what's your question? And then I throw it out there. So it's not so to be specific, Tyler, it's not about, hey, let's just sit here and do a training. And then you can ask me a question later. It's literally next question, next question, next question. So the benefit of a group call with when he does that is just like in this situation, someone's going to ask a question that you're thinking. Right. And someone's going to ask that question and go, okay, great. But when Tyler, when you say, this is my question, then you get, here is Tyler's answer. Hmm. Hmm. And so that's what you look at and go, okay, this is what I'm doing. So if anybody's asking the question, you're getting that direct one-on-one -on -one attention in a group situation, but you'll be like me trying to write down everybody else's question and the answer that came up as they go through and, and, so, they're, and they're recorded and put in our private Facebook group. So you can go back and listen to them as much as you want or ask questions, comment back there. Okay. And so um, Bob is the master laser focus. Hi homies. So, you know, Bill, Bill, Bill is in between adjustments right now as the chiropractor. So he already said, look, uh, I got to go off with patients right now. So they can wait. Yeah. So there's a recording. You can That's do this. Right. You're in the group. So, but no, so that's fantastic. So I would just simply, guys, decide if it's something you would like to pursue and then talk to Bob about how you pursue it. Yeah. Right. I'm not here to say you have to go do this, this and that. I'm telling you, I get great insight from Bob and I have for years. And the goal is what? When I got to reach out and talk to somebody, Bob's going to answer. And so it's just one of those things you need to sit back and understand. So, Bob, I truly appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Netta, thank you, Debbie, for coming on board. Debbie, Netta. So Brian's here in spirit. Wesley, yeah. Brian. Wesley's out there. Ron Siegel, yes. Robert Brooker was here Robert today. Brooker. I've never been so quiet. I was in, <laughs> totally engaged. I love everything. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Yeah, I can't wait to be on your show. I know. I can't wait for that. Yeah. June, my birthday. On my birthday. Coming up. Yeah. Write that down, Bob. It's her birthday on the day you do the show. I already wrote it down. Yeah, I see. <laughs> see, because he's already doing the connecting and cultivating yes, thing. Yes. So, and Bob, you often say things that light up Robert Brooker's soul. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. That's a really yeah. big, that's a big compliment right yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Lighting up the souls. Huge, but huge. Perfect. Uh, I want to say thank you, everybody who's joined in across all of the social media. Those watching a replay, thanks so much. Bob, I do appreciate you coming in and dropping just, you know, one millionth of the wisdom that you've already accumulated so far. Thank and you. So VIPs, thanks for sitting here with me and engaging with Bob and everybody else. Go out there and sell something. I like that. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Okay.